Hi, this is a quick video on how to set up and use an external M.2 SSD. If you want to see complete instructions on writing, they are in the link below on my website. So here I'll be using the Wavlink external enclosure, which I purchased on Amazon. And you can use any enclosure, but the reason I'm using this one is simply because the build is made out of metal, so it's quite durable and uh, probably better for uh, temperature control. And the fact that it supports high-speed USB 3.1 Gen 2, which I'm using on my XPS 15 laptop through the Thunderbolt connector. So the Wafflink actually came with more than I thought it would. It came with a USB 3.0 cable, a USB 3.1 cable um, through the USB-C standard. It came with instructions, it came with a screwdriver, and with two extra screws. So I actually brought my iFixit um, screwdriver kit, which I did not end up uh, needing at all. So for the SSD, I'll be using the Crucial MX500. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because it's relatively cheap uh, for a very good performance. But uh, any M.2 SSD will work. Uh, SSDs have different lengths. Uh, the um, most standard one that I know is 2280, so I believe that means 22 by 80 millimeters. Uh, so just make sure you're buying an SSD of the correct size and the correct connector. So this is not for 2.5 inch SSDs, this is for M.2 SSDs. And the reason that I'm using uh, one of these is due to the fact that it's extremely small and portable. Uh, you can read more on my website about different benchmarks. So, uh, now let's quickly have a look about how we put this together. It's extremely easy. All we need to do is unscrew the two small screws at the front of the enclosure. It's a little bit hard to remove, and in order for me to remove it, because it's got a little bit of sticky material on the back, uh, what I did was just plug in one of the USB cables, since it's quite tight, and then just gently pull, and then it just came out. So then we're going to be able to see the actual PCB, which looks gorgeous to me. I love PCBs. Uh, so we can pause and admire that if you like. And then we will just have to remove the screw at the back, which is there to hold the SSD in place. Once you have the, it's it's in two pieces, so careful not to lose it. And once you've removed it, you can just gently slide in your SSD. And there should not be too much pressure. And it's completely normal for it to slide in at an angle of almost like 45 degrees. Once it is in, you can gently press down. So I used uh, my left hand to hold the PCB and then press down with my index on my left hand. And then with my right hand, I placed back the two screws that hold, well, it's one screw, sorry, but it's in two parts that hold down the SSD. And I screwed it in a little bit of my hand uh, and then uh, finished screwing it in with the screwdriver that was provided. Once that is in place, then we can just simply slide the SSD back into the enclosure, of course, the right way around, and re-screw it. And make sure not to remove the white sticky material that comes at the front, because that is there to stop your um, USB cable, uh, USB-C cable from going too deep into um, the PCB. So once we've done that, we can just screw it back on, and we're done. So a couple of tips. Make sure not to screw too tightly. Uh, they probably, uh, the screws, you definitely don't want to over tighten them simply because it won't be as easy to remove in the future and uh, you could damage it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think it's pretty easy to make and we're pretty much ready to benchmark. So for benchmarks, I just use crystal disk on default settings. Um, I benchmarked it just clean, uh, and um, I, I benchmarked at USB uh, 3.0 and USB-C through USB 3.1 Gen 2. So on my first run, I actually got really, really terrible scores on my USB-C, whereas my USB 3.0 got really good scores. So obviously something was funky. Uh, so I looked around for drivers, etc., and it turned out that I was missing some drivers for my laptop. So if you don't see performance that you should be getting before blaming the enclosure, make sure you have all the required drivers for not only your SSD, but also your USB-C port. So once that was done, I was getting really good speeds, which you can see on my website. So one of the weird things that I saw, and it might be different for you, was that through USB 3.1, which is a faster and better standard, I was actually losing a little bit of performance in 4K reads and writes. 
um, it was about a 15% loss, I think. So it's negligible. Well, it's not negligible, but it's not something that will affect you in day to day. And you can just use the USB 3.0 if you want. Uh, but that could just be due to the USB 3.1 cable that's included, so you can get yourself a better cable, although they're extremely expensive to manufacture and not that available. So I actually really like the Wavlink, and I think that for the price, the build quality is very good. And if you purchase through Amazon, you will have extremely good support through Amazon. And I have not had any issues with it. So in terms of performance, it behaves exactly the way that my SSD should behave. And in terms of thermal throttling, which is really uh, quite often an issue, um, I did not see any thermal throttling. But, but, and this is actually in a, quite a few Amazon reviews, the enclosure does, does get very hot. So I was using it for about five hours and it was hovering at uh, low 70 degrees. So that's rel relatively hot. It's not hot enough to throttle and you won't see any performance loss, but it will not feel very comfortable mm -hmm. to the touch. Mm -hmm. So it can be quite scary, but it should not affect it. And if you're worried about um, thermals or your SSD is hotter, you can always try thermal pads, uh, which um, and um, just place enough thermal pads so that the so that the um, so that the SSD is in contact with the uh, aluminium enclosure. And since it's that made out of aluminium, it should really um, transmit heat quite well. So that may help reduce. Or if you want to go hardcore, you could just machine and cut some holes in for airflow. But in general, this should not be uh, necessary. So of course, you can find the WAV link in the description below, and you can check out my site. Uh, and I'm interested to know what you're doing with it. Uh, if, I personally am making a uh, external Ubuntu uh, persistent um, operating system drive um, for use on my laptop so that I don't need to dual boot. But I'd love to hear what you guys are up to. So thanks for watching.